Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're doing the October forecast from Gas Webbies for today's October video. So this is a little bit of an extra uh, for this uh, Tuesday. I'm a little bit late uh, with this due to the way that... Uh, you know, the count has worked out this month with uh, with first day falling on Friday and, and around the weekend. So, yeah, a bit late with the October forecast, but I'll get on with it for you in a second. We'll have a quick review of the September forecast. At the end of the video, we'll have a little sneak peek at uh, November as well. So, uh, more about that in a second. Just say about the first video release of our 7 a.m. forecast. Uh, we've got the EC 30 days slash six weeks. Look, okay, coming up for you uh, later on. Uh, this afternoon or this morning. I mean, later on this afternoon, we'll have the 10 to 14 day. It's going to include all of the regular features as well. Please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, so the um, September forecast uh, went for a, uh, a, a warmer and drier than average September. We thought, uh, you know, it'd be a very classic anti-cyclonic September. September is an anti-cyclonic month at the best of times. Um, and so we said that the, we didn't expect like an excessively hot month, but we thought the temperature would be around half degree to one degree above the 81, 2010 average. And we also uh, predicted that it would be a largely dry than average month as well. The idea was there, but it would probably get more unsettled later on. And the last week of month would probably see a dissension into uh, genuine autumnal wet and windy conditions. We saw the temperature anomaly uh, turns out uh, with the uh, with the uh, climate average page at the UK Met set against 81 to 2010 above average temperatures across the board. Whole country from the far north Scotland down to the far south of England with above average temperatures hotter than we predicted. So we said like half a degree to one degree above the 81 to 2010 average. Actually, you see from those deep. Uh, pink to red colours, uh, the temperature normally was running around a couple of degrees above the 81 to 2010 average. So it was a bit hotter than expected, particularly so during that earlier phase of, of the month. Um, and so, so the second half of the month wasn't as excessively hot as the first half, but, but not enough to bring the overall temperature down. So a little bit hotter than expected, but we did get the trend right, but it would be a warm and average month. Uh, also largely drier than average as well. Uh, for this uh, September, so just flip the anomaly over there. Uh, yeah, we can see that uh, we had a driving average month through uh, much of uh, Western Scotland, down to Northern England, much of Southern South Eastern England. It was rather patchy, one or two places actually came away with slightly wetter than average month. Parts of East Anglia, for example, a little bit wetter through there. A uh, little area slightly wetter than average around West Wales uh, and in the South West Midlands as well. Um, generally average to drive an average in most areas with one or two localised areas uh, a little bit wetter. I think overall the precipitation side went reasonably well. What rainfall did occur generally occurred right at the very end of the month in the last few days uh, of the month. So, so we had like a three week run of very dry weather and then we had like a, a few days of really wet weather towards the end of the month. Overall I think we'd say it was a dry than average September through most parts of the country. Certainly in terms of rain days. Um, but uh, but as I say it did get much more unsettled late on in the month and that is what we anticipated uh, would happen uh, with that of course. And then in terms of sunshine, this is how uh, the anomaly looks against 81 to 2010. So it was a duller than average month for northwestern areas, Northern Ireland, western, southwest of Scotland, parts of southwest Wales. Uh, it came out with a duller average month. Conversely, though, in the east, it was actually uh, a little bit sunnier than average. So parts of Midlands, eastern England, and eastern Scotland uh, had uh, slightly above average sunshine. Um, so you know, I think it's very typical of September. It's a very typical September month. It's what we expected. The only issue with it was that it was a little bit hotter than, than we thought. It's quite an anti-cyclonic month, but uh, which not usually that's not excessively hot. Um, when you have a very hot September, it's more from like a southerly uh, wind. I'm not sure how all that much in way a southerly wind. So it's quite an unusual month in some ways. We got the trains broadly correct, but it did turn out a little bit hotter than expected. So I'd rate the September forecast at around, I suppose, six, seven out of ten, I think, uh, or, or out of five, perhaps around three and a half out of five. I don't think it was a bad forecast. Uh, right, OK, but let me know in the comments what you think. That's September done with, Ben. So let's move on to October. So uh, we'll have a look at some model data, first of all, and then I'll give you our forecast for October. So this is how CANSIPS is looking in terms of its mean sea level pressure anomaly 
for October. Some travel tidbits, of course. So go for an unsettled uh, October with uh, Cancip's deep low pressure over and to the north of the country and bring in, you know, quite a strong westerly zonal flow. So looking uh, very different in October compared to September. Cancips is going for a mild of an average uh, October with above average temperatures there for the UK and Ireland through most parts of Europe as well, looking warmer than average. Uh, with low pressure, when it's really in control, it's going for a wetter than average month, and quite substantially so, actually. I'm not sure why the temperature on is as warm as it is, given that, uh, you know, this is quite a, a wet October. I would have thought, you know, uh, temperature on would probably be about average, really, in uh, October with this much rainfall coming in off the Atlantic. But uh, anyway, go for a, a warm and wet month. Um, this is how the uh, CFS V2 is looking. So, again, uh, this is 700 millibar height only from the CFS V2. Going for below average heights to our west and northwest, above average heights to our south and uh, southeast. Large area of blocking high pressure around Canada and uh, close to Greenland, but more on the Canadian side of Greenland. So that keeps us on the mild side of the jet stream, despite the blocking on the mild side of the jet stream. Uh, bringing in the wind again from the west or from the southwest. You expect quite an unsettled month with this. The temperature normally isn't as excessively warm uh, with CFS as it is uh, with can sips. So uh, it's a little bit above average. Average is slightly above average, but, you know, not far from, from uh, normal, really. And uh, the uh, precipitation only, though, is significantly wetter than average. So uh, both models are going for a very wet month. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got CFS and also... Cancip's going for uh, a really unsettled October, not just the UK, but for most of the northern, western parts of Europe. And then the Beijing Climate Centre uh, looks like this. So overall, a more anticyclonic signal uh, from Beijing Climate Centre, as we often find. So going, this is 500 millibar heights, and I'm going to go for above average heights, only slightly to our south, some weaker pressure through here. Uh, that could be some lower pressure to our far North. But overall, I think this is a more anticyclonic signal. Still going for above average temperatures. So, yes, we see the temperature anomaly coming out warmer than average there. And the precipitation anomaly showing a little bit of a north-south split. So, to our north, it's slightly wetter than average. To our south, it's slightly drier than average. Not a particularly big deviation. But in Beijing, climate centre is going for quite an unsettled uh, October, especially for more northern areas. Uh, right, so uh, we've got a clear trend here amongst these models. They're all going unsettled. They're all going Atlantic-driven and low pressure dominated to varying degrees. Obviously, the Beige Climate Centre is, is less with that. Can Sips is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's like the, the strongest signal for, for wet um, Atlantic-driven weather. And CFS is somewhere in between. But they're all going in that direction. And we're all going to put above average temperatures uh, as well. So clear signals from these models. I'm a little bit more unsure about that. I think they might be going a bit over the top with this Atlantic-driven uh, wet and windy signal. Uh, we can see from a short range that we are going to get like a pretty extensive period of higher pressure coming up from like uh, the end of this week onwards and through weekend into next week, uh, possibly up to the middle part of the month. So obviously that's going to offset things. So I'd say that it's not going to be quite as unsettled as this is showing. I think we'll have more in way of anti-chronic influence. It's basically going with the, uh, with the autumn forecast, which I think is doing okay at the moment. The gas level is autumn forecast, you'll remember, suggests equivalent with high pressure in September and October. So I don't think we're completely done with the high pressure that, uh, you know, really established uh, during the latter part of August, ran through most of September till the last week. I reckon we'll get ourselves back into higher pressure conditions. Well, definitely going to over the next few days. I think they'll run up into the middle, possibly the second half of the month. So uh, we will see more high pressure coming and going through this October. But of course, we are further on into the autumn, so it's not going to be as hot with this high pressure as it was in September. And the Atlantic will have more energy in it. So uh, I think we will get periods, you know, more periods of wetter and windy weather as well, as you'd expect, uh, the further on we go uh, through the month. So I reckon rainfall is probably going to come out quite close to average. I think we'll have wetter and, and drier periods uh, alternating. So uh, I would say quite close to average average rainfall. Probably a bit above average uh, with temperature in the end, but not as excessive as it was uh, in uh, in. Um, 
September. There is a possibility, I think, probably more towards the last week or so of the month, that we might get a, a cold snap. So if we do get some uh, early cold weather, uh, you know, probably almost certainly from the north, um, like a northerly blast, if we get that, I think it'll happen towards the latter stages of the month, probably in the last week, maybe the last five days or so, there might be quite a potent cold snap right at the end of, of the month. So that's just something to be uh, aware of. But I think overall, it's a relatively, you know, relatively typical October um, with, with drier, high pressure uh, conditions in the main, but also periods of, uh, of wetter and windier uh, weather. So the, so temperatures, again, a little bit above average, probably with a chance of cold as that, especially late on in the month. And uh, precipitation, again, probably quite close to average with drier and wetter periods offsetting one another. Final thing to show you is uh, is uh, November. So this is the 700 millibar height on the at the moment for November from CFSV2. Looking quite anti-cyclonic again in November. Above average height centred over to west of the country. That will bring the wind in from a westerly direction. So a relatively dry and mild November being predicted there from CFS V2. We should worry about that when we get closer to it. Right, so uh, that's the October forecast. I'm so sorry it's uh, late. You know, just the way the calendar has worked out uh, this month. But uh, that's it. That, that, that's the gap. So it's October forecast. As ever, we'll evaluate it, you know, uh, at the start of November and see how we did. Uh, and that's it then. So I've got the EC uh, 30 days slash six weeks look at coming up for the UK and the rest of Europe as well uh, in, in a few minutes. And uh, then, of course, after that, we're going to have your 10 to 14 day that's going to include all of the regular features. For the Gazweb is October 2021 forecast. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.